Hey everybody, it's Goblin X, and welcome to the Murders at Karlov Manor Arena Open Day 1 event. This is going to be a super competitive Murders at Karlov Manor Best of 1 sealed event, where we are competing to get 7 wins before 3 losses. If we can do that, we'll qualify for Day 2, where there are potential cash prizes on the line. So really cool, super competitive event. Without further ado, let's just bust open our packs and see what we get to play with today. All right, so we've got some really good rares in green and blue. Hide in plain sight is a huge brick wall against the more aggressive strategies, giving you two two twos for four mana at worst, and you might even be able to flip them up later as big creatures if you got to pull some creatures out of this. Intrude on the Mine is probably our most busted rare. Five mana for a fact or fiction style card where you reveal the top five cards of your library, split them into two piles, and then your opponent lets you draw one of those piles into your hand, put the other pile into your graveyard, and gives you a Thopter with power and toughness equal to the number of cards you had to put into your graveyard. So this is a, a five mana instant speed 2-2 two, two, or 3-3 three, three flyer that draws you two or three cards. This card is completely nuts. Incredible card. As is Kellen, another one of our green and blue rares. If you have four lands in your opening hand or you draw into them, then you can cast the Tale the Suspect Adventure on turn two to play your third land on turn two, then play your fourth land on turn three and cast Kellen, which is a really nasty curve. No matter what happens to Kellen, if you've cast Tale the Suspect, you've already investigated, so you're getting a two for one if your opponent casts a removal spell on Kellen because you're still drawing a card off of him with that clue. And if your opponent doesn't deal with Kellen, you're going to keep chipping away with that flying vigilant damage. So incredible card. We're really likely to want to play blue-green here. Um, three of our rares are completely unplayable. You don't even really have to read Officious Interrogation, Illicit Masquerade, or Cryptex. But Deadly Cover-Up is a full-on board wipe if we can end up in the full-on Soul Tie deck in green, blue, black. So pretty excited about these rares. These really make us want to play green and blue. So hopefully we've got the support at common and uncommon to play those colors, but let's take a look at our colorless and multicolored cards, see what kind of fixing we have, and see if there's any other really powerful cards to choose from. So our fixing is quite bad, there's one Case of the Shattered Pact and one Public Thoroughfare. The Thoroughfare is the weaker of the fixing lands, and Case of the Shattered Pact is one of the weaker of the fixing enchantments, unless you have enough multicolored cards to actually solve it, which is pretty unlikely, but we might have a bunch of the hybrid mana flip cards, that's something. Got some cease and desists, which are decent sideboard options, but this is best of one, so we're not going to main deck them. Hustle and bustle is not very good. Push and pull is decent in aggressive black and or white red decks, because you can use push when you're in a pinch to destroy one of your opponent's tapped creatures, but you can also use pull as a potential finisher. A repulsive mutation is pretty disgusting in sealed. A lot of the games can be slow enough that you get to have a bunch of mana up late in the game, and then whenever they try to cast anything, you're just like, okay, I'll turn my 1-1 into a win condition, make it a 7-7 seven, seven or something, and stop your only play for the turn, so we're definitely playing that if we go green-blue. Uh, Double Dog Walker is huge for red or white aggro, getting a bunch of bodies onto the board, but none of these other multicolored cards are super great and sealed. You can try to build around Insidious Roots, but that's super hard and sealed. It already doesn't work super well in draft. We've got double gadget technician as well. So if we have really good red aggro stuff, having two gadget technicians and two dog walkers means that we're really good at getting an incredibly wide board state. But if we look at red as a color, just because I can see it here, it looks very empty. There are six red cards total, only one of which is a card I actually really like main decking, which is a fender at large. Then there's mediocre removal with detonation and mediocre creatures with orangutan bystanders. So got the great hybrid red cards, but nothing really on color. So probably not heading that direction. Uh, we've got Wisp Drinker in black, white, and Granite Witness in blue, white. So decent cards there. All right, let's look at the colors individually and see what we've got. Checking out the whites. Pretty good aggressive stuff. Neighborhood Guardian is premium, along with Perimeter Enforcer. We have the double Dog Walker towards white as well. We can play that even if we're not playing red, so we treat those as a three mana face sounds that flip up make some dogs. That gives us the wide board state that we need to trigger the Karlov Watchdogs to give the whole board plus one plus one. So really nice go wide aggro stuff out of white. Doesn't look bad at all. There's certainly some filler creatures like Lamasu, Phantom, the trackers, the case file auditor, the zero on color enchantments. Um, but I think the rest of this plus two dog walkers is a decent reason to be slightly interested 
in white aggro. For blue, we don't have a huge quantity of cards, but I don't think there's a single bad one. Like, Curious Inquiry wouldn't work well in this deck. There's not a lot of cheap creatures, especially not evasive ones that can make sure they get past your opponent's blockers. So that's not great, but the Intrude on the Mind is incredible. Out Cold is a fantastic tempo play. Double Deduce are great ways to get some card advantage early, and they help you hold up a counterspell like Reasonable Doubts. Cold Case Cracker trades off and make sure you get a two for one with that Investigate for the clue token. Blue looks really, really solid and just deep enough to be played in a two or three color deck like blue, green, blue, green, black, like we're trying to go. Check out the black now. We do have an Unscrupulous Agent, nice little two for one creature, and we've got great removal in this color with Long Goodbye, Slice from the Shadows, and Murder. So if we want a lot of interaction, that is what black gives us. There are some much more mediocre cards, Clandestine Meddler with like no other suspect cards, Repeat Offenders, a pretty weak mana sink, um, the Agent Corners or the Agency Corners are really slow, it doesn't add up, isn't very good, but we've got the Board Wipe in here too, so it's interesting to consider. Four Macabre Reconstruction is way too much, we're not going to have that high of a creature count, we might play one, um, but that's about it. So yeah, like these would be the black cards we play. It looks pretty splashy here, but just kind of awkward with two double black cards. Because um, you would much prefer to splash cards that only require one mana of their respective color. Trying to hit two swamps off the splash can be pretty difficult, but might be worth it for a big board wipe like Deadly Cover-Up. Checking out the red now. We already saw it. There's six cards total. It is our lightest color. There's almost nothing in it. Um, but there are good hybrid mana cards like Dog Walkers and Technicians to keep in mind there. And green is pretty empty as a color as well. Oh, wow, I'm really disappointed in this, actually, because we haven't opened any Novice Gardeners, which are the three mana 2-2 two, two you can flip up to grab whatever basic that you need. That card is premium, and I feel like I just haven't opened that thing in sealed in several events, which makes our just green splashy decks so much weaker. At least we got one Topiary Panther, but that being the only piece of fixing we opened on color is kind of insane. We also didn't open up any of the rare lands for fixing, so our fixing is weak, and Laid to Rest and Slime Against Humanity are completely unplayable. Pick Your Poison's borderline main deckable. Six, seven, so there's seven actually playable green cards, so we do need to fill the deck out with a lot of multicolored and a lot of blue, so throw in the Kellen for sure. The Repulsive Mutation. I mean, two mana gain two draw a card. Would we really need filler because we don't have that many cards on color? Might not be completely unplayable. I can't imagine that's good, though. Um, yeah, this is an on-color disguise. This is an on-color disguise. I guess we just run filler disguise creatures to get there. Um, definitely thoroughfare. We're going green, blue at the core, splash a little black. Pushes one and a black, destroy a tapped creature. That might not be uh, terrible. Probably isn't. We do not have a lot we're doing early right now off of just the green. Uh, we've got a tiny, tiny bit of collect evidence in green, which is just sample collector, really. Don't think that's worth insidious roots yet, unless we've got a ton in blue, which I don't think we saw either. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's Granite Witness and some Technicians out of the blue that we can um, flip up off double blue. And then that does make Case of the Shattered Pact a little better because our fixing's pretty weak. That makes it so the Pact could actually see all five colors on board and become the win condition where any of our creatures is flying Double Strike Vigilance. It just kind of ends the game. So yeah, blue, white, green, black, red off technicians. It's pretty rare that that would happen, but maybe that's enough to uh, to to get us in that direction. Um, so black, the board wipe, the slice from the shadows removal, the murder removal. Anything else looks like poop. 
I guess Long Goodbye is pretty good. Scrupulous Agent is fine. Don't think we're splashing in on Scrupulous Agent, but I'm just seeing how many of these are actually good. Now we're on to the blue, which we're definitely playing Double Deduce, Reasonable Doubt, Cold Case Cracker, Out Cold, Intrude on the Mind, maybe some Criminologists as well. Could certainly be a thing. But we're definitely not a Curious Inquiry deck. We do not have a lot of cheap creatures, and the ones that we do have are not flying or anything like that. This is a weird looking deck. If we don't sort by creature, there's still plenty to do throughout the curve. The double deduce helps a lot. Two drop to draw a card, and then with our extra mana early, we get to draw another card off the clue. Gotta cut six cards here. The mana base is gonna be kind of awkward for sure. Um, but this might be what we have to do. All of our colors are pretty pretty light. There's not a ton of playables in them, so I don't know if we even have enough cards to really do some kind of streamlined two-color deck. If, if anything, it would be a white-based aggro deck. I don't know what secondary color could even really get there. Um, but it kind of feels like we do have to do some three-color splashy pile, and all of our power is uh, aligned in this three-color pair in green, blue, black. So if we're not playing stream-colored, Stream colored, streamlined two color, then this is this is the color trio to be in. I don't love a sample collector here, because we're not gonna be able to really get multiple attacks off of this super well. We're just not that aggressive. Double criminologists are kind of filler. I mean the four or five bodies are are decent. Crowd Control Warden's probably a bit weaker here, but it is one of our few white permanents. If we play Case of the Shattered Pacts, we'll have two white permanents total, one Warden, one Witness. Um, and I feel like solving this is really going to be quite rare. We're just using this as like a weaker Topiary Panther for the most part, just because we're splashing in double black cards with Deadly Cover-Up. I mean, we aren't even really splashing, we're just full-on playing three-color here. We have a double black deadly cover up. We have a double black murder. We have a double blue intrude on the mind. Like our mana base is just awkward enough. We have to play the case even if we can't solve it, I think. Which is not ideal, but not horrific. Um, the case, having a case and a basic land cycler does help us not really have to play 18 lands here because that's two two mana cards that pull a land out of the deck that still make it feel like um, closer to 18. I think I kind of like that. Yeah, out of all these creatures, I like Criminologist the best, so we can cut those two. And then a double blue might be a little hard, actually, so we could cut the Witness and even the Technicians, but then we have, like, no creatures, but that uh, means any deadly cover-up have... Uh, any deadly cover-up hand that we have is quite a bit stronger, so that's kind of cool. And we've got a lot of removal. We just trade one for one removal for their creatures instead. Drop the Pick Your Poison. Just full-on four-color control nonsense. This looks like a deck. Not a good one, not a great one, but a deck nonetheless. I mean, the only massive, massive flaw that the deck has is the mana base. I feel like the rest is actually kind of reasonable, because we do have Slice from the Shadows, Long Goodbye, Push, Murder, Reasonable Doubt. Those are all, that's five, three mana or less, one for one removal spells to trade off with. That kind of like ups the quote unquote creature count by five by just having that many pieces of cheap interaction to trade into early creatures from our opponents. We also have the out cold to stun them, the hide in plain sight can two for one trade, trading into two aggressive two twos out of the like Boros aggro decks and stuff like that. And then obviously the deadly cover up is massive. The intrude on the mind is massive. We just try to flip the game with these two cards. I think this is a reasonable deck idea. It doesn't look super, super good, but I don't think the sealed pool can really support a better mana base for a three color deck. And that's the big flaw of this deck really. So, I mean, it's interesting. It's cool. It is definitely an option and I will save the deck and take a screenshot of it. So uh, if we do want to roll with that, we can, but I want to take a look and see what our streamlined two-color deck in the sealed pool would look like. Again, it's certainly a white-based aggro deck. I don't really know from there. So here's a start to our streamlined white aggro deck. We're putting every hybrid white mana card into the deck. The dog walker is 
but Granite Witness, I think, is another pretty much auto-include. The Warden's a little weaker, um, but it's about the power level of, like, the Fenestrated Phantom here, which is kind of expensive, kind of overcosted the flip, but would still make it in. I think the Chaos File Auditor is probably a cut here. We're unlikely to have enough enchantments to do anything with this. Uh, but we will play a push to destroy a tapped creature in here off of just the white. Our white is quite low on interaction. There's just two combat tricks and that's it. So that is one of the flaws. So ideally, out of a secondary color, we're looking for something with a little bit more two, three mana plays and a little bit more interaction, some removal and stuff. So it could just be like black, white here. We saw that black had um, murder. Black had the two mana removal spell. Black had the slice from the shadows. And it had one or two like two mana cards, like the uh, one one that makes our opponent exile card. So maybe black, white is our, our streamlined two color deck or something, but we'll go through all the colors and see what it looks like. Checking out the blue. This doesn't look uh, horrendous. I do really like the intrude on the mind to get ahead in the late game. The out cold to try to tempo out a win. Stunning their creatures is pretty exciting. Uh, we'd only have to cut two cards from here, so we can cut the Curious Inquiry, and we can cut one of the two Criminologists um, to keep that curve a little lower. That's pretty cool. Um, the deduces are kind of weird in here because we do want to be impacting the board in the early game rather than just playing a, a draw spell or a counter spell. But I do think deduce and reasonable doubt are both just pretty good cards in general anyway. So white blue tempo does look does look decent. Doesn't look horrific. The creature count's pretty great. It's gonna be 15 creatures after we cut our criminologists. So yeah, this is definitely an option. It also makes the Granite Witnesses easier to flip up, and we could even hard cast it, so it's certainly an option. For Black White, we do get a couple two drops. I'm not in love with the Repeat Offender, but it is an option. I forgot to check the colorless cards. Oh, it's Case of the Shattered Pact, Cryptex, that's it. Okay, so we didn't get the like two mana, two one artifact creature or anything, so that's not going to change things. Um, but yeah, Black gives us better creatures, I think. Even Clandestine Meddler looks okay in a more aggressive deck. We might run that. But the Night Drinker, for sure. Play it and flip it up to not have to lose the life. Or we could just hard cast it if we're in the aggressive lead for a big flyer. The Coroners are still really slow. Um, Reconstructions, we might play one of. We're definitely not playing a Board Wipe in this deck. Um, or the Confiscation. Could play a Toxin Analysis for a trick, but I think with access to all the black removal, we can just use Murder, Long Goodbye, Slice from the Shadows. Don't need the little death touch trick there so this would be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve cuts so we cut these 12 and this this collection of cards is the deck if we go black white i kind of prefer the blue white but that might be wrong i just have had a lot of success with out cold as a huge tempo play so that's i really love having the out cold there and we get a bomb rare by being in blue we get the big card draw spell with the blue mythic rare that also makes a thopter so i feel like that also makes the the blue deck a little bit better because again we won't be running a deadly cover up for this um this black white aggro deck so Still feel like blue-white if we do a stream streamlined two-color deck, and red literally doesn't have enough cards to make 40 playables here. And several of these are just not very good. Main deck like Demand Answers, Knife, Gear Bane, Orangutan. Yeah, it's not white-red. It's not a Boros deck. Uh, and if we go green, we've got a lot of really filler stuff we need to cut, like Slam Against Humanity, Laid to Rest. I guess that is only three cards we need need to cut. We can run a Pick Your Poison. We can run a Topiary Panther, even though we're more aggressive. And that just gives us a Bomber that lets us play like Hide and Plain Sight by being in green, which is pretty exciting. But if I do want to play a color that gives us access to a good Bomb Rare, I guess Hide and Plain Sight and Killer Among Us is like a Bomb Uncommon, so that's also exciting. But still do feel like I prefer the blue... Uh, over any of the other colors in terms of what we've seen from secondary colors. And even then, we are running some awkward, some filler creatures. We're low on two mana creatures, so we're not curving out that well. We don't even have an on-the-job to buff the whole board when we do make a wide board state with double dog walker. When we don't have a dog walker, the season consultants are like astronomically bad. Like, this is certainly a playable option for our sealed pool, but I think I would rather just play the really mediocre mana base three-color pile and have access to the strongest cards in the sealed pool than play the mediocre curve aggro deck. Both of these decks have issues. This one's that it's going to be inconsistent. It's not going to be curving out. 
with super powerful cards, so we might just get overwhelmed by a single bomb from our opponent and stuff, and at least with the other deck, we have multiple bombs to compete. The problem with that is that it's inconsistent in terms of mana base. It's also pretty slow in a weak curve and everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm not very impressed by either of these decks. I feel like they're both somewhat comparable in power level. Not because, like our first sealed pool, they're both really good. Uh, it's because they're both pretty medium. So I'm just going to roll with the splashier three color deck this time around. All right, here's a look at our final deck list for today. We're on a pretty medium, splashy, three-color mush pile. We've got a lot of really powerful cards individually, like Kellen, Hide in Plain Sight, Deadly Cover-Up, and Intrude on the Mind. So we're really trying to just ride that high of casting something super balmy and super powerful and getting that to just win the game single-handedly. Like a cover-up when our opponent has three or four creatures on board and we only have like one, that can flip a game in our favor. And Trude on the Mind being constantly a three or even a four for one to flip the game in our favor by drawing us two cards and giving us a creature or drawing us three cards and giving us a creature. Uh, hide in plain sight, two for running our opponent on blocks, which is great, and Kellen just being a really efficient card. So hopefully we can just draw these rares pretty often, pretty frequently, and cast them a lot. That is really the goal of this deck. So everything else in here is just to help support getting to these rares for the most part. Lots of, well, all the fixing we could run. I won't say lots of fixing, but all the fixing in our sealed pool, really, with Topiary Panther, Case of the Shattered Pact, and Public Thoroughfare to help the mana base support these three colors of rares. We've got plenty of interaction to try to stay alive to get to these cards with Murder, Slice from the Shadows, Long Goodbye, Push, and a Counterspell with Repulsive Mutation and Reasonable Doubts, and then just some filler creatures to get to that 40 card count with the Rubble Belt Maverick, Unscrupulous Agent, Green Belt Radical, Scoundrel, Cold Case Cracker, and some Criminologists. So filler creatures to trade off with, maybe prolong the game a little bit and uh, to have 40 cards in the deck, really. So kind of a uh, awkward pile here. We're just trying to draw our best cards, but fingers crossed we can do that. We'll find out soon enough as we head into the gameplay. Here we are for game one. I don't really think I can keep a monocolored hand, even though I could reasonable doubt turn two. If this was two forests, I could, because Panther gets another color, but I think it's just too awkward mana-wise. All right, now we've got all the colors, and the deuce, the deduce gets us out of the card disadvantage here to draw two to make up for the mulligan. So this looks like a great interactive defensive hand here. Pretty happy with it. Not happy with my opponent playing a one-mana card. That means they're going to be as aggressive as possible. It might even be worth just killing the Mask Maker so they can't just drop a ward card for two mana this turn. Um... I think I'm just going to get hit by it, and then if they do disguise something turn two, I'll just long goodbye the disguise. I feel like the odds of them having, like, more than two disguise cards in their hand are pretty low for your average sealed pool. That's the only time that the Mask Maker, like, really gets us. Okay, and they don't even play a disguise card anyway, so they don't even get the Mask Maker value. So, let's deduce now and then slice the Phantom so I can save long goodbye to deal with a disguise card. I guess Slice can deal with one too, but Long Goodbye can deal with one for only two mana, so on turn four I could crack a clue and cast Long Goodbye on a face down. So that's probably the uh, the plan here. Um, should I Slice right now? Um, the reason to do that would be to play around Audacious whatever. It's a plus two plus two combat trick for two out of Boros. So if they go to combat without playing anything, um, they could hold that up and then use that in response to the Slice. So maybe I should have just Sliced during my turn here. Let's play around the combat trick. Okay, they've got f uh, three mana here. And they're just going to main phase a face down. Okay, so now I'm going to get the Mask Maker um, cost reduction there. Yeah, so let's... I guess with an Intrude on the mind to make a 3-3 three, three flyer at instant speed if we're lucky... We might actually want to slice the face down and then um, long goodbye draw a card next turn on the face down, but I think I need to preserve my life total badly enough to still just slice a couple, slice a couple damage off here. I'm going to hit the Phantom. I could definitely see an argument, though, for slicing the face down, then draw a card long goodbye the next face down. Oh, 
But let's gain a couple life by hitting the flyer here. We do need to find another blue source before I can intrude, which is kind of a big deal. I guess the other problem with trying to do it this way is if I try to long goodbye right now and they flip this up and it costs three or four mana, which a lot of these do, it won't even resolve. It'll be mana value uh, too high, so I'm not going to do it until they've tapped out a more mana. This also lets me hold up reasonable doubt, but I guess I could have held that up either way. I don't have to crack the clue till the end step. I can cast both of these. Hoping they dump their mana into more creatures or something here. Counter a creature, then kill the face down. They don't do anything. That I don't like at all. Because then I have to just crack the clue, and if I try to long goodbye here, they potentially flip to counter it, and that is a nightmare. That is not a blue source, which is also very bad. So if this is Dog Walker, we're fine. That is a, a two-mana card when they flip it up. But if it's... Like anything else, Granite Witness, um, the Gadget Technician, the Museum, the Knight at the Museum guy, those are all four mana, and Long Goodbye doesn't resolve anymore. So I guess we go to my turn, and we don't find the next blue source. feel like this game would be in the bag if we had another blue source, so if we do manage to lose here, it is probably mana base related, but we're playing all of the fixing in our sealed pool. So we're, we're trying our best. Okay, yeah. That is a Granite Witness, so Long Goodbye wouldn't even resolve. Now I actually do feel pretty stupid for uh, slicing the Phantom instead of the face down, since Long Goodbye could have always killed the Phantom, even if they had the mana to flip it up. Definitely the wrong decision there, early. Still got them to do basically nothing with all their mana that turn. I mean, they did flip up the Witness, but they didn't even hit us for the three. They didn't do anything with the, the tap ability. So it's not the complete end of the world. We go to 11 now. Again, we find a blue source and we flip this game in our favor, but if we don't find a blue source, we're just dying to their current board. I can interact with anything else they try to do, but I am dying to their current board. Crime Novelists. What is that doing in there? Casual 1-3 says hello. Alright. You got it. There we go. That is huge. Actually, one mana off from doing that and another spell. Go to combat. Resolve. Surprise. If we get at least a 2-2 here, we're good. We trade the 2-2 flyer with Granite Witness and we draw three cards if they give us a 2-2. If they give us a 3-3, we block the Novelist and draw two cards. See what cards we hit. Oh boy. Um, this is a hard decision. So, Kellen and Push need to go to different piles because they're the best cards. I think Kellen is the number one best card. So we do this. They give us Kellen in a swamp at a 3-3. Or they give us push, mutation, a land, and uh, a 2-2. Two -two. I think that seems correct. And either way, we get something big enough to trade into the Granite Witness, and we probably just do that, right? Just trade into the Granite Witness. I don't think we can put Kellen and Mutation into one pile because they'll just shove that in the grave because Mutation doesn't do anything if we don't have the creature like the Kellen here. Which land is more helpful? Uh, we've got three black sources already, two blue sources, so the island is slightly more helpful. Let's do that, I guess. Because uh, we will want the island with a Kellen so we can do the tail and cast Kellen in the same turn and still have blue up. I think this is the pile. And we're happy either way if this is the pile. Might just trade into a combat trick here. They've had a bunch of mana up like every turn and just done nothing with it, so they likely have combat tricks sitting there. But now we're five cards closer to our board wipe. Got all these, all five of these non-board wipe cards out of the way. Maybe I should have gave Kellen both of the lands because there is a shot. Yeah, I was going to say there is 
a very realistic chance that they just have solid removal in their hand. Um, because we haven't played a lot of creatures and they're just gonna kill the Kellen. And just like, so be it. At the sack an artifact, yes, yeah, so this is that's not gonna happen. This is only gonna die if they combat trick. Ooh, I guess actually in red and white, both of the combat tricks give them a clue. So they could combat trick a different creature, sack the clue to get more damage in and make that a 2-4. In which case they won't kill the Thopter, but they'll keep Novelist around while doing extra damage to me. So maybe it's better to have just blocked Mask Maker. Okay, looks like it doesn't matter. It's a green source from our opponent. They're splashing a little bit. All right, we want uh, we want long goodbye and reasonable doubts up. So we want four mana up, whatever we do. If I play Kellen, I don't have four mana up. So here we are. About to be so suspicious. I guess we are just investigating and not playing Kellen yet. I guess having enough mana for one of the two is probably still reasonable, and at seven life, I do really need a blocker, especially when Long Goodbye doesn't even kill Granite Witness. Like, Long Goodbye kills their one-two on board, so I am sort of in a position where I need another blocker on board, so I will get another blocker on board. And then, sure, they'll probably removal spell Kellen, but that means they're not removing spell my only blocker and putting me to three here they have to play two removal spells to clear a path suspicious detonation which literally can't be countered awesome it's one of my least favorite aspects of this format is they put all this uncounterable removal in here to get around ward which makes sense with all the disguise cards but the fact that it hoses counter spells too is really annoying because counter spells have not been particularly good and limited in years anyway and now it just feels so gross when you just can't do anything with your already mediocre counters. Well, they're down to two cards in hand, so... Just trade off the Thopter and take one damage a turn on a six-turn clock. If they ever try to combat trick the Mask Maker for lethal, we long goodbye it. But ideally, we keep the long goodbye for a bigger threat they draw into later. That kills us faster. If they cast anything to try to uh, make the witness big enough to win, we, we counter. Exile any number of face-up creatures you control with disguise in a face-down pile, shuffle it, and then cloak them? I mean... So they... they Take Granite Witness out of combat, and then they have the ability to flip it up and tap a thing from then on. Do I just counter this while I know I can actually counter something? Or do I just long goodbye once it's face down again? Uh, this is so weird. I'm gonna just kill it, I think. That was unexpected. That's the first time I've seen anybody cast that card. Opponent has style. But now I get to keep a 3-3 to block the 1-2, and they just have no damage on board, especially with that top deck. So I feel like this is a little better for me, because now they just have no action. Oh, their last card was a land. Like, they don't even attack in and put me to 5 or anything. Well, now they really have no action. I get to start hitting them, and I hold a blocker up. That's big enough to kill the Mask Maker. Let's go. They are playing off the top here. I think our, our Mythic Rare Thopter plus card draw has... Well... You know, I am a Magic the Gathering commentary channel, but sometimes I think I need to shut my mouth. I mean, our flip is so good here, I think we're still 
fine. We're not great, but we're fine. Because we can flip and have an indestructible 3-3 death touch just block their, their 4-4. The problem here is, though, they are in a good position to attack with all of these, and I don't get to know which is going to be the 4-4, so I think we have to hold off for a turn until they use this, and then I can start attacking again. Yeah. Yeah, because this is so bad if the 4-4 gets in, so I have to just block every single one and hope I block the right one. Oh, a killer among us actually functioning as designed here. Who's the killer? We have to block the killer with our face down. More players choose Merfolk than anything else on a Twitter poll. But this player is all about style and originality. They've played two cards I've seen almost nobody play. They don't care about the meta. Is this the kind of mad lad that says, you know what, the goblin looks like a killer, he's the killer. Are they trying to sneak by with the human looking so innocent? Or are they like everybody else and they choose the sneaky merfolk? Oh boy. Leave your comments in the, in the chat below right now because this could be a game changing play. I'm going to say they chose the goblin. I think they're that kind of person. They're just like, goblin is killer. No, they chose the most popular one. They went for the merfolk. All right. Well, this is still not horrible. I don't even think I flip here then. I just let my 1-1 one -one die. You just always choose merfolk. Okay, now we can just out cold them next turn. So deduce as well. They are red, so it's moderately bold to attack with everybody, but I'm still going to do it. Two turn lethal, because we can hit for six twice in a row. I have way more uh, blue instance than anything else, so I'm going to hold up a bunch of blue in case I draw into more. At least I think, that's just like a natural assumption. Blue has more instant speed stuff. There's the board wipe if we end up needing it, but now we're on a two turn lethal clock, so feels less likely to be a thing. Okay, now I'm tur I'm two turn lethal without even flipping the face down, so we hold up that ability. Jam in for five, put them to seven, play the cold case, cold case cracker. We've got eight power on board now. Play the case of the shattered pacts to... Uh, no, we don't. If I play the case, we're thinning a land out of our deck, but if I play the case, then we can't afford to flip the face down and give our blocker indestructible if something weird happens. Okay, lethal? Lethal it is. Close game. Close game. Our opponent gets all the style points in the world for that deck. Uh, but we do win the game in the end. The actual game of Magic. We are 1-0 heading into game 2. Alright, here we are on the play for game number 2. This one's looking pretty sweet. Starting with the Surveil Maverick into the turn 4 Hide in Plain Sight. Um, I'm going to keep the land. We do really want to have 4 mana turn 4. I'm just going to keep the exact cards we've got there. We're going to turn 2 Deduce. Now, well, I feel a little outclassed with the best common in the format, Novice Inspector being our opponent's turn one play. That happens to play very well against one mana one ones. Sorry, you got a one mana one one and you surveilled two? I got a one mana one two and drew a card. Eat that, nerd, says opponent. And I will. I will eat that damage right to the face, down to 19. Past turn, so we investigate. We are playing against Boros. This could be pretty scary, but hide in plain sight should be really helpful at getting some blockers set up early. 
Definitely don't want to cash in removal on a 1-2. That's just going to get to hit me for quite some time. But I will cash in a slice from the shadows on a, a face down here if they let me. Make sure I'm getting the most out of all my cards, making the most of my mana in the early game to try to prolong things as long as possible. Preserve my life total. They went this way. Okay, so they're splashing around. Grabbing some lands. We're not going to have to slice yet, so we get to just crack our clue. Part of the power of deduce here, giving us extra stuff to do with our mana when we don't do anything else. Speaking of having extra stuff to do with our mana, our opponent didn't crack their clue turn two? Which is very strange. Maybe they have something that cares about the number of artifacts on board, or something that gives them value every time they sack a clue. Opponent's got something going on over there, and I don't know exactly what that is, and that makes me a little uncomfortable. So our mana's already perfect here. We have double blue and double black, which is what we need for every rare in our deck, so I don't think we're panthering. Let's just hide in plain sight, get a nice, wide, beautiful board state, and we can get two creatures here that could flip up later and be massive. Or we could just get two lands so we can draw into the creatures later if we just want two twos and we're not going to spend mana on the flips. Honestly, with like a deduce in hand for a bunch to do with my mana, more creatures to play, I think I'm just going to get two twos and redraw these later because we're going to shuffle our deck. This is probably incorrect, but here I am. I've had games with hide and plain sight before where uh, we've gotten so low on cards in the deck that we end up hitting everything we didn't cloak. So there's been games where it's like, it's just correct to get the lands so that you can draw the creatures later so you know you have more action left in the deck for when the game does go long. And I feel like with like three more pieces of card draw in hand, two off to deuce, one off cold case cracker, I think it's pretty fine to uh, just make sure our, our deck is more spells. And especially if we get to trade a shock into a land now, that feels wonderful. Seeing our opponent, our opponent is like, are you joking? You picked a land? When you could flip things up? Yeah, I did. And it worked because you shocked it. So, probably not the right play, but it certainly played out very well. We ripped a shock out of their hand and we are stable. We're not really in a position to, like, jam in or anything awesome here, but we're stable. Just get a flyer so we can start poking them, I suppose. Got a lot of instants here, so there's definitely an argument for just sitting and drawing cards, trying to hit land six, turn six. It does have to specifically be a forest, though, to actually do something. At this point... All right, plenty of stuff on the ground. Flyer is looking great here. Good stuff from Cold Case Cracker. Tipster is also looking great. It's getting its counter. Well, we're holding on to all the interaction. We're going to deduce and slice something, probably. Maybe they'll play something expensive and we'll reasonable doubt and slice something. Oh, boy. Well, that changes the plan. Now we're just going to out cold. Rather than just take seven right now, because this is... Yeah, that, <laughs> that's a swamp. Uh, okay. Tipster for the 2-2 two -two is not a bad trade, so we'll do that. Tipster for bystander is a little worse. So I'll keep the bystander locked down. Right, they don't even attack. We've got the six mana, but we don't have the double green yet, so no panther still. Probably have to draw into murder to actually deal with the warden, but we have time to draw into that. So let's not do it yet. I think holding up slice for two is enough here, so let's deduce. Uh, let's hold up murder mana in case we hit that. Well, there's a case, so there's the next green source. So I can still hold up a slice for two after using case for the green source. Sure. Oops, that's wrong. Oh, I didn't. I already played my land this turn, didn't I? Yeah. So I've got slice for one up. Okay, it probably doesn't matter. They only have a 2 2 that's actually actively attacking right now. Yeah. 
That's fine. We probably would have just ended up cracking a clue this turn anyway. But I kind of did forget we already played a land. Loose. Now we're sort of digging for the board wipe, aren't we? This board is getting wide. Hey. What does this do if I... Uh, collect evidence? If evidence was collected. Exile a card from opponent's grave. Search their grave, hand, or library for any cards the same name and exile them. They shuffle, draw a card for each card exile from their hand. So we can rip all their whatever we want out of their deck. It's interesting. They don't have any graveyard abilities on board right now, so I don't think it matters that much. But they're going to have two cards left in hand post board wipe, but they have two clues, so it's kind of like four cards over there. They only need to get hit by Cold Crace Cracker four times to die, so are we still... On the just hit them four times plan? Maybe? It's pretty bold. We need to survive to the point of attacking them three more times now. I guess I do have a good chump set up. I chump the warden, put a counter on cold case cracker, and our other blocks are fine. Not a lot of them, but they're fine, and I've got cheap removal if we need that. I'm going to try to get this cold case cracker kill if we can. If we can't, we might get them to commit a little more to the board before we do wipe it. If we still do that, inevitably. We will be far ahead in cards after the board wipe, actually, considering the cold case cracker investigates as well. So it, it's super fine to just do that and play really defensively here. But I think prolonging this board wipe like one turn from now is just free, and that's an extra six damage to my opponent, so I think we at least wait till next turn. Yeah, like, we take an extra three, but they take an extra six for me waiting. Right, because that's two hits from Cold Case Cracker before I wipe. I guess they only take an extra three, actually, because I still got a pre-combat attack with the Cold Case Cracker. That's not entirely true. Airtight Alibi. Okay, that's fine. They're going to win this combat, but um, then I'm going to wipe the board anyway. Another creature on board, cool. It does give them another clue, so it's not like a blowout that I'm going to kill that as well. Okay. Crack the clue. We've got no other instance we really want to do right now. Now we've got a push pill. Yeah, this, this board wipe should be the victory, pretty much. I don't think I rubble belt Maverick when the cold case cracker is just going to die anyway. Two mana up after this, so I can hold up reasonable doubts. I don't think it matters, though. They would have to play a six mana card for me to be able to actually reasonable doubt something. So it's probably better to play public thoroughfare after this. Okay, they already played two inspectors, so the odds of a third being there are so low. This is sealed, not draft, so... They would have to just oh, straight up open three. Let's do inside source, see if they've got another one of that. Let's see what's in their hand. They have Airtight Alibi Quintorius. Okay, Quintorius doesn't do much by himself. See, so the assist works with Quintorius. They've got an Axebane Ferox? Oh, shoot. Double Offender at large? They have big creatures to draw into. Oh, lord. They've got the Fireball with World Soul's Rage. Oh, we could have got a Tipster out of the deck, but 
I think we're fine with them redrawing a tipster anyway. Okay, well, this is an arena open event, so this is the point that you should write this all down on a notepad. But I'm lazy. We're just going to end the search here. Oh, shoot, that's right. I investigate, so I can play the thoroughfare and still hold up the counter, which is sick. I guess the only way that I end up countering here is if they try to just <laughs> Quintorius and put Airtight Alibi on it, which would be really weird. Maybe they'll crack the clue before they play Quintorius to see if they draw something better. There we go. See? See? Value. Slam dunk the reasonable doubt. It's one of our last opportunities to actually counter something with it. Late enough in the game, they have seven or eight mana on board from here on out. And here's my win condition. They didn't have removal in hand. They didn't have a lot of removal in deck that's good enough to kill it, so... Let's hope that's enough. I'm not gonna commit another counter onto it right now, though, just in case they do instantly hit the removal. There's Gadabout, which is hexproof during their turn only, so I can kill it during my turn. There's Breakout, which could find another blocker if they find one of the top six. They did find a Fetter at large, but they can't afford it, so all we have to do is kill Gadabout, and they're dead. They don't have the mana up for Airtight Alibi, so they can't protect it from our removal. So, boop. And hit for six. Move on to game number three, two and O. Oh. Here we are on the play for game three. Hide in plain sight is, out of all the cards in the deck, the one that is the closest to convincing me to keeping a monocolored hand. I'm actually just going to do it. Island or Swamp makes the hand incredible. And Hide in Plain Sight buys us a bit of time. Alright, green-black from our opponent with Maverick to start things off for this avail. Found the island, turn three. Not perfect timing, but still solid. Perfect timing would be if we did hit it turn two and then we get to deduce and crack the clue by now. That would have been super sick. Um, I do think this hand calls for the counter spell. Well, does it? Because I'm about to hide in plain sight next turn. No, probably hide in plain sight and double block for now. Actually. Hide in plain sight. Please, no swamps in the top five. Oh no, two black sources. Scary. Well, I'm not going to shuffle the deck anytime soon. So I don't think there's a huge downside to just taking the lands. Probably do take the panther, so I do have something to flip up. If it sticks around. Yeah, I'll take the panther this time around. So the Panther's on the left. Scoundrel, get something indestructible this turn to get in for two. You got me. Criminologist, that's pretty solid here, actually. Is that better than just a killer among us? Probably not. I mean, maybe. We do really want the cards to find the black source quickly. Or any land to flip up the Panther. Too. You know, I'm going to play this over Amogus. Oh, a big flyer. We find the Black Source easy enough to kill. There we go. Perfect timing. Four mana to kill that, two mana to hold up reasonable doubt. 
Playing against green white, I do want to kill it before they untap for combat tricks. Whoa, just trying to space bar through my turn, not all attack through my turn. Just gotta put a little fear in our opponent's mind. That was a good reasonable doubt. Could suspect the scoundrel. That's gonna be annoying on blocks. It does make it so we get to start setting in with the whole team. That might have been worth it. Actually. Five, six. If I flip the thing up, I'm not doing anything else this turn, but yeah, so be it. Let's trade into the scoundrel. Get damage rolling in. Okay, that works too. Get to hold up long goodbye this way then. Mogus on human. Just gonna start clicking the first button I see with the killer among us so people can't figure out what's going on. Repulsive mutation? Okay, the game is now unlosable. That's not true. I could. Could lose. Holy snap, did we do it? Did we get them with a Mogus? Let's see. Show me the instant. Dang. I mean, they've got a lot of mana untapped, so... It's quite likely to be an instant if they didn't want to play a, a, a creature there. I can't counter that. I could mutation and make my creature too big to die, but I think I would rather hold on to mutation. Okay, let's see if they can kill this too. Then we have a, a problem. Actually, they can kill both of these. They still only have four power on board. Okay. I mean... They're at six life with only four power on their board. We're still in the lead. Especially when we have untapped mana, like this hand's crazy. With untapped mana. Okay, so well... Now we have to just Criminologist and the Scoundrel. They've got one card left. If that last card isn't instant speed removal, then I just kill them with mutation. Get five damage through right now. Please tell me your last card. Not a counter. Or is not removal. Merfolk is sus. It is not. Oh, I didn't have to pay that much. Could have done one less and still had the long goodbye. Slight punt, but still the victory in the end. We are now... 3 and 0. Oh, at least a 50 50 run, no matter what, but see how far we can take it heading into game number 4. Game number 4, we got that early long goodbye. We desperately need a blue source. We're not even on the draw here, we're on the play. How many blue sources do we have again? 8, right? Yeah. I think we take the mulligan here. Okay, this. Uh, we don't have a green source, but I can ditch the Maverick for now. It's also not great. But again, that is the deck flaw that can get us killed, is the mana base. So we're going to see hands like this. We're going to get some mulligans. Well, there we go. Um, You know, with the cover-up in hand and the double black already, I'm pretty cool just wasting my turn to set up mana rather than committing more stuff to the board right now. That's just going to die in a board wipe we're going to have to do later, most likely. Hedge Whisperer, 0-3. Okay, well, I don't have to board wipe that or anything. Mm. Just play a single 4-4. Four four. Or do I just chill all game long? I don't really have other things to do trying to just get them to overcommit into a board wipe. So I feel like a 4-4 four, four and start beating down is fine. If 
I sit here and cast nothing for like three or four turns, all they have to do is play one or two creatures and I'm slowly dying. And they're going to force me to board wipe without a wide board. Single 4-4 four four could change that, or at least makes the board wipe less suspicious. Alright, it's just going to get one for one removed, which would happen before or after the board wipe, so that's fine. And honestly, this board state, we just play a 4-5 and beat down. There's a face down. It's a reasonable doubt. Just the exile an attacking creature. Yeah. Guess I could have countered that, but again, we've got the board wipe here. So I'm kind of cool with them just blowing all their removal pre board wipe. That's annoying. I guess I just pretend I spent reasonable doubt without actually spending a card. If I reasonable doubt, they spend two and then I'm just really down. What the heck, man? Double unscrupulous agent arena. So rude. Okay. Well... Now I get to reestablish a board state. Hopefully hide in plain sight's enough to beat their two cards in hand, and they don't top deck like a hero. Oh, so far so good. They top decked a non a non-land as their first draw. Oh wow. Um Creature creature here, right? Because we'd like to draw all the non-creatures later. It's just still more removal. What does that one even do? Uh, it's the death touch flip. Um, I can't. That's uncounterable, so it doesn't even matter. That I have a counter spell in hand. I do really need to leave this creature on board for Repulsive Mutation to do anything. I mean, if I lose this, this mutation doesn't do anything till I draw another creature, so I think I just need to keep the Panther with this. And I have to just blow it. Wait, cancel? I need to make sure I'm actually targeting a spell. So, X equals zero. Confirm zero. This creature... This spell. Okay, cool. We did it. Thought I was accidentally clicking zero spells to counter. Okay, a uh, single 6-5 trample wins the current race, so here we are. It's a top deck war where I just hit a draw two. Let's go. What is their first draw? We may not know yet. They're just going to get in for four. Yep. All right, so it might not be useful. Here's the deduce. Find public thoroughfare. Let's me tap that clue before I crack it. Let me find cold case cracker. Great. They're down to 10. It's inside source. Okay, that's a really good one. The wide board state's very threatening. They can also double inside source one of their detectives to make it a six power creature attacking in, and then we kind of have to trade Cold Case Cracker off on blocks. We are super dead to on the job. Even if I hold two blockers up, right, they deal like six damage to me, and I lose both my blockers for very little. So I think I still have to send in just block something with Cold Case Cracker. They make both of these four power and I trade into one of them, or they make one of them six power and I trade into that one. Got them down to four to try to kill them next turn if we hit something decent. 
Both four power looks like the play. I have to trade. Wait, why did they do that? If they're tapped out, they're dead now. We just trample for four. Okay. All right. Just a little misplay there. I mean... They were still... Pretty doomed, right? Because even if they had nothing good in hand there, if they didn't attack at all, they would take three in the sky and then they'd have to block Panther with like everybody to not take trample damage to go to one. So they'd have to lose their whole board to Panther and go to one life, but they could have had one more turn. All right. Scary, scary close game. We are 4 0 oh now, though. Solid luck. Solid luck with this, uh, this seal pool so far. Heading into game number five, positive win rate, and no matter what. Here we are for game five, on the play with the deuce reasonable doubt combo. you love to see it. No black source yet, but we've got four pieces of card draw in hand. Both these deduces are a draw two, so they can really help dig towards the swamps. Plus we'll have clues on board for the, uh, the tap land as well. Yeah, the public thoroughfare, there it is. Forgot the name. All right, playing against Boros with no two drop is a pretty solid start. Now the thoroughfare, perfect with this clue. Okay, I need to stop hitting spacebar so fast and actually think about my counter spells here. So projector inspector, I think that is actually worth a counter spell that lets them dig through the deck pretty well with the draw discard triggers, and I. Don't I can only kill tapped creatures right now, so let's actually counter here. Alright. Could crack a clue and deduce to get another clue now. Pretty sick. Uh should I crack a clue right now? I guess I only have one instant speed thing and it's two mana, so I should see if that changes my plan, but I don't think it will. No, a land certainly does not. So we get to deduce, deduce during their turn to draw a card, then Criminologists crack the clue draw a card. Feels pretty good. Cold Case Cracker. Okay, can't counter that. But we've got our own. Still think I would rather do the nice mana efficient Criminologists here and start beating down. Especially with a pole in hand to try to kill them with their own graveyard. I guess we can kill them with our graveyard too. Could be a bunch of extra damage out of nowhere to win the race. Harried Drone Smith. Alright, so they're going all flying for the damage, so playing our own cold case cracker next turn should be pretty nice. There's their thoroughfare tapping that Thopter rather than attacking with it. Cute little combo for sure. Cute little combo. Okay, so we're on Unscrupulous Agent Cold Case Cracker for the six mana. Nothing to pull right now. I could push the Cold Case Cracker if I'm really scared, but with our own coming up, I am pretty excited about the prospects of pull for the victory. So put them to 16, drop the Agent... Gotta land. Up the cracker. They've got full five color over there. And Lightning Helix, the cold case cracker, makes the race much worse for us. It's a reckless detective, too. If. Starting to feel like I have to just hold up on blocks and actually push the cracker. Really does depend on what we get to draw here. Do this pre-combat, even though I could do it for free off the blocks. Long goodbye, the reckless detective. Hit for five is something. 
They crack back for six if they send in the whole board. They have five power in their graveyard, so we could hit them for ten next turn, which is still not lethal. The only thing this long goodbye can kill is the, Re the Reckless Detective. And Holding Criminologist just stops two damage. It just stops Dronesmith from getting in. I mean, I think we've flooded enough. We kind of just have to accept the current board state is what it is and just make this board favored to us rather than trying to oops, pull, I win. I think I need to kill Cracker and Detective and then just win the race with Criminologists, ideally. But they get a clue to maybe get ahead in cards and... We'll see. So we hit for five a turn, they hit for three a turn. We need to stop drawing lands. That's that's the play, that's the hope, that's the line. Alright, well they finally hit their sixth land, but it is a clue land, so they can draw a card off of it. Which is not good for me. Oh wow, and they had crowd control warden in hand too. Well, hide in plain sight's a really good draw. On the plus side. Maverick Criminologists at this point. So we're close to flipping up a Criminologists. Well, I can't attack in, but I've got the blocks lined up for everything but the flyer from Drone Smith. This is a four mana card, so that's why I couldn't long goodbye it. So we had to keep getting hit for one in the sky every turn, even though we could deal with the cold case cracker, stop taking the three. We're both playing off the top, but they have already hit uh, more spells, I think. Down to seven. Okay, maybe not. Maybe they're hitting more lands right now. I think I need to keep this face down just so I have more power total. I mean, there's never a reason to flip this up, right? Because when it dies, it's going to go in the grave either way. There is a reason to flip up the Criminologists, but it's not going to get an attack in anyway, so... Here we are. Taking one a turn until we can hit something. That isn't to land. Down to six. Another land from our opponent, at least we're both drawn lands. Oh man. <laughs> All right, four and one, heading into game six. Here we are on the play for game number six. We have a long goodbye and a push early, no matter what. Really wanting to draw lands, specifically green sources towards the hide in plain sight, but we have two ways to buy a little bit of time. Prolong our life here. All right, first draw is a green card. Not good. At least it is a cheap green card instead of like a... Uh, a five drop like a killer among us or something there's the deuce i think i need to main phase this so if i hit my land for turn i can play it right now boom oops wrong card surveil towards more mana that is painful um I guess I just keep it on top, right? Because I'm just going to go Swamp, Hide in Plain Sight, and then it's going to go to the bottom of my deck. But being in the bottom of my deck is better than being in my graveyard for the vast majority of the time in this deck. Because we only have, like, one Collect Evidence card, if any. Yeah, the only Collect Evidence card in this deck is the board wipe, so... Let's just keep it there so that Hide in Plain Sight puts it on bottom, so if we ever shuffle with Topiary Panther or something, we might actually hit that. Because it is one of our strongest cards. And I could, you know, maybe if they just make a wide board state, I could just spend a turn doing out cold so that I can draw into it. Like, it might be worth it. Or I could just, like, long goodbye the face down and that's it. Long goodbye plus crack the clue. 
is fine. Yeah, we don't have to hide in plain sight immediately. Let's let's go for the best cards we got. Decline that. Face down was Sanguine Savior, so we got rid of a flyer. That's fine. Another face down. Down to 18. Crack our clue. See what we draw for turn. Land would obviously be beautiful. Cool. So now we can just kill her among us instead. I like a 4-5 body or multiple 2-2s two a little better than the 3-1 one ones right now, but... I feel like without Cold and Killer Among Us, we can get in the aggressive lead here. Um, let's do a Goblin this time. I feel like I've gotten all paranoid about choosing Merfolk. Now I probably choose Merfolk too few times. I should really just do 33% chance of each. Roll a three-sided die each time. One of those little pyramid dice. I guess that's a four-sided die, but the four is a re-roll. Ooh. Okay. Well, it's just three one ones now, but make them discard make your move and get three one ones is solid. It's still a good deal. Well, we want Rubble Belt Maverick Engrave. Let's put that there. Show me the face down. Or the the trample trick or something? Oh, Infiltration? Sure. It's not the end of the world. Kellen, hello there. Hello, my buddy. Oh, boy. One Kellen with a counter on him, but don't get the, the investigate value, or hide in plain sight and put a counter on something. I think I really... I'm pretty greedy, so I'm going to wait for Kellen until I hit another land. We can already get pretty far ahead. Okay, this is just all nothing that can flip up anyway, so. Boom. Now I have a 3-3 three, three against the 1-3. One, three. Oh, this is not very good for my opponent here. Because I can just... Uh, Trade a 3-3 three, three into that. I guess since they force a 1-1 one, one to block it, uh, it's trading a 3-3 a three, three and a 1-1 one, one into it instead of just a 3-3. Three, three. But this is still a good trade for me. Green Belt Radical. That is really sick when I hit the mana for it later. Well, we didn't hit the land we wanted to do, the 5 mana, or the 6 mana killing thing. No way to buff the board right now. Eh, at least I can still get my Kellen value and play a creature this turn then. They're green-white, so the only board wipe in that uh, color pair gives me a clue token when they use it, so I'm not that scared about overextending here. I think it's fine to be a couple creatures ahead of our opponent. At all times. Ooh, Axbane Ferox is terrifying. Honestly, scary enough to trade a forest and a radical into. I'm pretty far away from flipping radical. There's no one white mana combat trick. I still didn't hit the fourth mana for Kellen, but I can just drop it. Now that I've got a reasonable doubt to help protect it, though, I'm just going to play Criminologists. And that's still going to attack in basically just as well as Kellen. This board's pretty empty. So a single 4-5 on the ground actually might just be more damage than a 3-4 in this guy. Kellen does threaten to blow up their clue, though, which is something. It's definitely not nothing. Delny. So we can't block their small creatures with our big creatures. So that's a bit threatening. There is the sixth mana, but it's not a second blue, so I can't... I can't kill it and hold up Reasonable Doubt. I can't out cold and hold up Reasonable Doubt. So I'm still only casting one spell. 
I could out cold crack the clue for free off of criminologists and see what happens. I still think I'd rather out cold during their turn. Makes it a little awkward. I mean, it's four damage on the board that I can't really block. It's probably fine to just take it and play Kellen for now. Um, and then we can push Delny. Just push Delny off a bridge or something. Although pull is a big win condition right now. They have eight power in the grave we can pull. Out cold into pull means... Eight more power on our board. That's 13 power on our board, which isn't lethal. That's not quite there. I do like that we can out cold and just sack the clue during their turn, though, rather than Kellen. Really trying to hit another blue. This might be wrong, but I really don't don't hate this at all. I think this is kind of sweet. Just playing real slow and grindy with this deck, but it's worked out well for us so far, so we'll keep it up. Six mana over there. Tap the two biggest creatures. Because the sentry can make itself bigger and Delny's already two power. Bother. Well, no, I kind of wish I just held on to reasonable doubt. I mean, Kellen is incredibly good against that card, but the Surveil 2 is also just incredibly good, period. Yeah, ditch two lands at this point in the game is really nice. Well, there's our next blue source, but it's a tapped one. Ugh. This man has been... not great. And Kellen and push, but then I don't get to play Thoroughfare this turn, which means I don't have double blue for Intrude on the mind up. What are you going to do? Push on the Delny does feel like a pretty big deal here. I don't think I can spend the turn on the Thoroughfare. But Intrude on the Mind so insane next turn. I just 4 damage on their board and I'm at 17. I guess we take the 4 and have no blockers up to guarantee an intrude on the mine next turn. Try to draw all the islands. They have Delny plus on the job, that's gross. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we're not dead. They'd have to like double on the job to kill us. And if they tap out, we kill them with pull, so this is fine if they go for an on the job. Doesn't look fine, but it is. If they have on the job and the plus one plus one for each creature you control trick, and that is their hand here, then you got us, because that is like the perfectly crafted hand. Ooh, it's fuss. It's a little scarier than the on the job, but they are still just dead to pull. Alright, and they only have one mana up, and we can hold up reasonable doubts. So they can't stop us here. Yeah. Pull stuff out of their grave. Ambusher Ferox. Ambusher blocks this turn of Fable. Blow up a Thopter. Alright. Big stuff from Pull that game. I don't know if I played it out right with the whole trying to get to the intrude and everything. Some spooky stuff with Delny with the fuss. Potential out cold there. Or not out cold, a potential on the job there and stuff like that. Pretty scary stuff yet again. But we do find the victory in the end, and we are 5-1 and one now. Only two wins away from potentially getting a day, uh, day two here, but also only two losses away from being out of the event. Luckily, no matter what, we are getting some of our gems back at this point with this high of a win rate. So we're pretty happy with that. But we'll see how far we can take it heading into game seven. Here we are for game seven. Very reasonable hand, as you can see. We will keep it here. It's pretty slow. If our opponent's aggressive, we're going to have issues. But they're starting with a dual land, which is nice. Starting with a dual land, milling an off-color card. So 
happy with the way things are starting here. So we're, we're really slow here, which means I really want to hold up reasonable doubts. Turn two, if we can, um, to counter their three mana two, two. Um, and then turn three, we play the thoroughfare. Turn four, we play a case cracker. And turn five, we try to win off of intrude on the mind. I think that is our curve. We counter the three drop, spend turn three on the tap land. Oh boy, well, that feels good. It's not a three drop, but it's a really scary card. They've already got the two evidence engraved to level it up, and they're stuck on two mana? Okay, okay. Um, I am going to play a 2-2 two -two here. If we don't find an untapped blue source, we'll still just throw for our next turn and just have a 2-2 two -two instead of a 3-3 three -three in the sky. This gets blocking a little sooner. Guess it doesn't block against the thinking cap. Yeah, maybe I should have still just thoroughfared here. I probably should have. Ooh. Now I don't even want to turn five intrude on the mine because I can hide in plain sight, which is wild. That thing will have five or four power, so it'll kill both my two twos. We'll play a little shell game here, though. Let's hide in plain sight. Ooh, green belt radical. Okay, flipping agent doesn't do anything, so we'll take the green belt radical. We'll take a forest. Just have a wide board to start getting aggressive with. Yeah, I don't, I don't dislike this trade when it doesn't have a thinking cap on it. Okay, and they're not going to take the trade anyway. If they put the cap on the inspector and send in, we can just crack back for six. Okay, and they're just going to be on blocks, which makes a lot of sense. What is this? Radical? Oh, I could flip it up for four, for to just, just make it a four-four, but we want to wait till the seven here. At four out of seven mana? Man, the, the downsides of Thoroughfare have really shown themselves this game. Because I can't play anything if I play Thoroughfare this turn. If I don't play Thoroughfare, I can Criminologist, but then it's going to take two more turns to play Intrude on the Mind. Oh, boy. Our opponent's stuck on three lands. It's probably worth staying aggressive and playing a 4-5. They could have the two-mana counter here. That'd be their best play. The common or the uncommon would do it. Looks like they don't. Ooh, unauthorized exit. That's still decent. Just skip the turn there, basically. Okay, now we have enough mana to play Cold Case Cracker and Thoroughfare this turn. Really, really getting uh, getting punished for playing the three mana two two turn three. I think that has not panned out well at all. Surveillance monitor is a huge roadblock. It's a three three and a one one flyer. If they manage to collect any more evidence later off of other cards, they'll get even more one one flyers. So very, very good card. That is not a blue source, so no intrude on the mind. But we can cast Cold Case Cracker. And then instead of intrude on the mind, we can just give the whole board trample next turn. See what that does for us. Actually, hold up. I'm so dumb. I can do this for only four, and it still gets the turn up trigger. I'm so dumb. All right, well, that's good to... <laughs> That's good to know for the future. That's so, so insane, actually. Now that I have a killer among us, I'm kind of just waiting till we have the most insane board in the world to do that, which I can kind of do because I've got a great um, cold case cracker attack here still. Let me go Amogus and Death Touch Trample is wild. I'm just going to continue avoiding the merfolk like a plague. We'll go human this time. We went goblin last time. I don't know why I thought the turn face up triggers would only work if you paid the full flip cost. If you cloak it and you get a mana discount on the flip, you still get that ability. We, they might have just been dead by now if we had just flipped that turn four. That would have been an insane turn. That's a huge punt, actually. Luckily, our, our crack back next turn is still going to be completely insane. We're going to have to lose a lot of the board or just die. We are at 16, so we need to like not die on the crack back either. But 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. They're going to need their own um, on the drop or something to buff the whole board to kill us. I guess we could just leave the 1-1s one back. We've got a couple Trump blockers to not die. 
to an on-the-job or something. I think that's fine. I wonder who the killer is. I said that as a joke, and then I genuinely was like, it is the human, right? <laughs> Let me double check real quick. Math is for blockers. I don't know exactly what's going to happen here, but it's probably good for us. We'll just use our abilities after this. Ooh, is that the green belt radical? Please tell me that's the green belt radical. That'd be so lucky. Oh my god, it is. Okay, this is a lot of damage. Okay, they're not dead, but um, we are also definitely not dead. I don't remember if I played a land this turn, so I'll deduce right now in case I hit a land and I haven't played a land yet. Alright, so in the future, I've probably misplayed this a lot in my time. Because I never realized this interaction at this point. You, we should just always be cloaking green belt radical. Flipping that for only four mana is the stone cold nuts. There's no fog in this set, right? Yeah, there's no fog. This should just be mega lethal. Uh, Vigilancy is a bunch of immediate damage. Yeah, monitor, make sure I have a blocker up. Alright, there's the concession. That was wild. Okay, that could have been... That was completely destructive and oppressively powerful, and it could have been even better and even worse for our opponent. Like, I just didn't even notice or acknowledge that interaction. That was... That's insane. That you can flip up green belt radical for just four mana if you manage to cloak it all right well that was a really really gross game of magic and we are now six and one heading into the final battle with two shots two rounds in the chamber to try to get that seven and run try to get that day two draft going tomorrow so fingers crossed well let's get into that final boss here we are for game one of the final battle if we lose this we will have a second chance this has a very solid game plan here. We have great ways to dirtle around with our mana that don't actually give us any blockers that die to our board wipe. So our game plan here is obviously going to be setting up mana with Case of the Shattered Thingy to find the Black Source. Uh, the first Black Source, that is. And then we can just dirtle around with Deduce to get ahead in card advantage. Um, and also not look that suspicious um, to where we're still doing plenty of stuff with our mana. Just not stuff that dies to a board wipe. Our opponent has taken a mulligan here, starting with Scene of the Crime, a great multicolored card here. So great fixing for our opponent to start things off. They are green with a land that provides mana of any color, so it could be like anything here. I will get my first black source over to Deuce. Yeah, let's get this out of the way. There's Topiary Panther, so they're doing the same. Just spending their mana, finding uh, more mana, basically. Grab the white source, the planes, off of Topiary Panther. Turn three face down. Turn three face down. Now we could do our own turn three face down, but we could also deduce and try to find another black source in time to wipe the board, and I think that's going to be my plan here. I mean, we've got more than enough to reestablish a board state post-board wipe, so it'd be perfectly reasonable to play Radical. But if we don't find the Black Source by our next draw step, we can just play the Radical face up instead, which will buy us more time than playing a 2-2. Uh, Having a 4-4 four, four on blocks probably buys us more time, uh, unless it just pulls removal out of our opponent's hand, then it's kind of the same difference. Let's 
So three color here for sure. Green, white, blue at least. Here's another face down. Sure is. Let's deduce. Okay, don't find the black source, so... That also is not the black source, but Kellen does let me... Um, investigate again and play a fifth land this turn so I can use the investigate and drop a 2-2 two -two to soak up some damage. And with a Kellen in exile, that's going to make our opponent really, really want to expand their board state quickly and try to kill us here. I think it's pretty reasonable to use Kellen's adventure and play a face down 3-3 three -three for the turn. But we are starting to get kind of desperate for that second black, taking four on board. If we block the wrong creature with Radical, they might just kill it with the face down. Just flip the face down up into like a 5-5, five five, not even lose a creature. Maybe I should just hold up Reasonable Doubt and crack a clue. It's four damage on board, but it would be seven if they just flip. If they flip and one of these is a Crocodile, we're just in a very bad position because they get a clue. There's a lot of, of options here, and I'm not in love with any of them. I guess I won't have the mana to crack the clue to help try to find the black source next turn if I do Kellen right now. Right, because I, I need the blue source up for Reasonable Doubt, so I need to Reasonable Doubt something and just draw a card. Hopefully. I think I can draw a card first and see if we hit the black source. If we don't, we need to hold up Reasonable Doubt. If we do, we can Kellen. This is rough. But I think I'm I need to be digging for this board wipe. Okay. Yeah, I have to hold up reasonable doubt then to stop their next play. Nervous Gardener is one of the face downs. Okay, that's not a problem. Really hoping the other face down is just like another gardener or something. Instead of a 5-5 crocodile that we just can't counter. And that also gives them clues, so if we board wipe, they've got more card draw set up. I think crocodile would be one of the worst face downs in the game for them to have against us. Okay, down to 14. They're just going to pass, and we don't find the black source still. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, we play a 3-4 blocker and watch it get killed by something. All of our lines involve just playing blockers here. Guess I could kill her among us, watch it get countered. I like getting another clue token and another land on board this turn, so we'll go for the Kellen, even though it's probably just going to get removal. Sets up to help us dig for the board wipe next turn. Because we'll have six lands on board, so if we don't naturally draw the swamp, we can crack the clue, and if we draw it off of that, we play the swamp for land for turn, and we have the five for cover up. They've got six mana now as well. Axebane Ferox, terrifying. Oh, and the two mana removal. So they're down to two cards in hand. Basically, like, if we can find our second swamp, we win, and if we can't find it, we lose. We have one draw step to get there, and that's not the swamp. Please, Arena. We're 16 cards deep. One black source so far. There's four more. There's five more, but one of them hits the board tapped, and that won't work for us. There's no way to survive without doing it, right? Seven mana, we can play a radical or sorry, we can play a criminologist. Or we can play radical face down and or no, radical face up and no, this doesn't go face down. Never mind. I guess I can kill her among us and go all chumps all day. Yeah. 
Okay, so we draw the card, and if it's the black source, we board wipe. If it isn't the black source, we have three chumps off Killer Among Us. Oh my god. Oh, I can't survive this turn without playing a Killer Among Us, so I can't play that. Oh, which means I have the black source, but it's uh, it's just going to be tapped next turn still, and we're just going to be dead. Still off the top deck, that swamp. God, why did it have to be the one tapped source? Oh, we do have one way to flip this. I forgot that the uh, Killer Among Us is really good with the case. Gives us green, white, blue, red. So if we have our one uh, green-black card, that'll do it. Buried in the garden. They have double removal as their last two cards. Oh my god, they do. Jesus Christ. Well, that's so sad. It's been such a victory with just one more black source. We just could not get there in that time. We spent, like, all of our early turns doing as much digging as we humanly could. So, like, yeah, I could have lived longer if I went for different plays and went for actually putting, like, blockers on the board. Um, but then we wouldn't have dug as deep by now to be towards this black source, so we still would have died in the end. Yeah, I don't know. I think that was all we could do, and it was just... If this was just a swamp instead, we win. Six and two it is. Heading into the final, final battle. Here we are now for the final boss, our final game of magic for today. Give me some good hands, Arena. No mulligans required. All right, this works. We have Deduce into Radical, Criminologist later. We've got Long Goodbye for early interaction. Without a green source, we still play all these cards. This is a keepable opener, and there's the deadly cover-up with one black source already and Deduce to dig farther. So that could be a win condition. Playing against green blacks, they're probably a pretty grindy deck that could uh, try to outgrind. I'm going to have to long goodbye the Sharp Eyed Rookie if they play anything with uh, three power or greater. Because then they'll investigate and they'll get ahead in card advantage real quick. It might be worth killing it right now, honestly, just because of the, the threat of them investigating a bunch. Even if we have a board wipe potentially coming up, that's just a huge deal. Intrude on the Mind, that is absolutely beautiful. So we can face down a Radical, make sure we're actually impacting the board, defending ourselves a little bit, and then four mana to deduce next turn, do the whole thing, and five mana Intrude, turn five. All right, we don't really want to attack into the Automaton, so... We'll just pass, and maybe this just draws removal out. That's fine if it does. The draw two off deduce should probably find a fifth land to at least get to intrude, and intrude should find the black source for cover up. All right, they don't even want to attack either, so let's start deducing. <laughs> All right, well, we've got uh, cover up mana if we end up needing it. But with intrude coming up, I think we're still just drawing all the cards in the world and saving that for just a no shoot button. Things go very wrong. Okay. Uh, murder in hand, so I'm going to play a second black source here. Um, but we are just going to intrude for now. Almost no matter what. Like, maybe they resolve a Rakdos off the public thoroughfare or something, and that, like, we need to kill before their end step to stop it from triggering. Then I would murder, but it's quite unlikely. Okay, let's intrude on the mine. Already got six mana and one green source. We've got the double black for the board wipe, so I don't care too much about mana. Okay, so they give me a 4-4 flyer and a hide in plain sight, or they give me four lands and a 1-1 flyer? That seems reasonable to me, honestly, as the piles. Hide in plain sight and a 4-4 flyer. Four lands and 1-1 flyer. It's like about as even as we can make it, right? 
I guess because they're probably going to give me the land pile, I should try to make the thopter bigger. We do like this? Like, they're never giving me hide in plain sight, right? So they just give me the case, but I get a 4-4 flyer. You know, case cost mana. I don't even want the case. Give me a swamp and a 4-4 flyer, please. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Give me a swamp and a 4-4 flyer. I don't think there's any pile I could possibly make when it's four lands and a bomb rare where they'll ever give me the bomb rare. So I might as well get a 4-4 flyer when the lands don't matter that much. Okay, they've got to make your move to destroy it no matter how big it is because that is artifact removal. But I think the, the idea was sound. I think that was a fine, a fine concept here. Okay, we can still just play a flyer. Maybe that was a little too all in. We could have taken the case in a land there so that if they did blow up the flyer, we still um, can threaten to. Well, not threaten to. We can still just find the second green for Rampager. No. Well, now I got a board wipe. At least I have a board wipe, but I, I have to do it now. Do they get any benefits from blocking? No. So they might um, play around like a combat trick here and get me extra damage. So I will... Uh, I'll send in... Nice. Okay, we get extra damage. Alright, they're down to two cards in hand. We're down to four and a clue. It's a plan. Try to cover anything up. There's no shot they have double Azoni, but... I'm scared enough that I'm just gonna really make sure they can't have double Azoni. Uh, evidence six. One, two, three, four, five, six. No double Azoni. And I guess I get to see what's in their deck by doing this. They've got Eavesdropper in. Okay, well the hand's good. Make your move Eavesdropper. Oh, no. Double Coerce to kill. Double Buried in the Garden. niv -miz it. Torch the Witness. Oh, my God. So, we've got a match on us. They're playing off the top, but good lord, is that a deck. There's the eavesdropper. You draw them another card. Do I just criminologists counter the removal and try to kill them? Four, five. It's five mana to play this. So I could mutation without getting any plus and plus one counters from it. Um, all right, well, mm. God, what do I... I just get ahead in card advantage, right? We kill Eavesdropper and draw a bunch of cards. Can't kill Eavesdropper and play Criminologist in the same turn. Start drawing cards. Still have Slice from the Shadows to kill Niv or whatever. Now I could Repulsive for at least one counter when I get around to it with Criminologists. Counter, make your move, and have a five power creature on board. Kill them in four swings. We've got an out cold to tap the blockers. I guess they don't have the mana for niv -Mizzet either yet. They need one more... They need a blue or a red source. Okay, there's a face down. Three mana to play with it. There's two face downs. Probably out cold those. We saw some really big face downs in their deck. Oh shoot, I don't have double green yet. 
If I use Kellen at all, I don't get to hold up Repulsive Mutation this turn. 14 cards left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Six, uh, 2 mana for Kellen. I have 6 mana up otherwise, which is going to be 4 on Out Cold and 2 on Sacking a Clue. I really want a Kellen right now. I'm going to get a threat to start beating down with with 8 mana. I can spend 5 on Criminologist. Still have 3 up for Repulsive Mutation to start beating down with. I can Out Cold these things once they flip them and we know what they are. Yeah, I can just counter the first removal spell and still, again, just always hold on to the slice for the Niv. I've got a lot of removal, though. Double Coerce to kill? I actually don't think I can afford to counter Make Your Move when they have two Coerce to kill. I need to be able to, like, counter that. Well, they're not even going to do anything. Okay. Out cold, then they Make Your Move Criminologists. Sure. Let me declare the attack first. Thank you so much. I at least draw a card here. Three. Sick. Yeah, I can't counter that and then just let a coerce to kill or something resolve. But if they coerce this criminologist, I still probably fine, but I just really need to be able to protect like Kellen. So we'll tap out for that. Just trying to get that mutation, like, one-shot kill, really. Land past turn. Okay, okay, that's a lot of mutation mana. Especially if I don't play Kellen. Drop a Rubble Belt Maverick on blocks. Mutation is now green, blue, and eight. We can have a 12 power creature on board. Hit them for 12 next turn is the kill. I probably should have Kellened and then get the free glue sack here. But I'm just going to hold a million mutation mana up. Mutation for seven. I don't know. I don't know about this. Scoundrel for indestructible stuff. Yeah, if I if I play Kellen now that I played Maverick, I'm not holding up mutation. I ditch both of these. Down to nine cards, but that's fine. This game's ending well before that. It's got a million mana slice for whatever their giant creature ends up being. Vengeful Creeper, sure. Green blue seven. Seven counters on criminal just makes it eleven. Eleven power. I crack back for twelve if I keep this board. Shoot. It's not gonna be quick lethal. Now let's jump and see what they do. It's gonna take two turns. Just gonna hold up a million instants again. I hate this. Oh, this is so anxiety inducing. Not flipping that up. We didn't see like an Aurelia's Vindicator or anything like that, so this Creeper's gotta be the better creature to kill here, right? Oh boy. We have six for this. 
This is 10 mana. I have 4 mana up for me. We have counter unless they pay 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six. They need a 1 mana way to interact to not die, right? 11 more power? Yes. Or they need 2 cheap removal spells. We have to, right? They need a 1 mana way to interact and not die. Or they need two instant speed removal spells. We've seen a lot of sorcery speed removal from their deck. Two buried in the garden, uh, torch the tower, whatever. That kind of stuff. Yeah, we have counter unless they pay six. Okay, I can basically guarantee with 100% certainty that we did not play that game out correctly at all. <laughs> but whatever, we're in there. We're 7-2, and two. I'll take it. I don't know what's going on, and I'm scared of everything. The anxiety is just bubbling up. I uh, probably would have played so much better if I just didn't even see their deck. <laughs> Honestly. But we take those. Really, really solid luck here overall. I mean, I think... I don't remember exactly, but I think both of our losses were just a little bit of mana issues, which is going to happen. Our mana base is not is not great here, for sure. I know definitely one of the games was mana issues. Uh, we had the cover-up, but we didn't have the second black quite in time. And I think that's basically how we lost. Uh, biggest overperformer, easily push and pull. This thing just won two of the games very, very handedly. Um, is there any massive underperformer? Not really. Um, maybe the case... But, I don't know, it felt like every time we had the case, we already had, like, fine mana. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't think there's anything that I remember just playing so much worse than I thought it would. Yeah, overall, the deck as a whole is a pretty big overperformer. Pretty big overperformer. I mean, obviously, being able to play four bomb rares in your deck is pretty fantastic. So if you draw the bombs, you can win, and we drew the bombs quite a bit. But that's also because we did manage to grind out those games. A lot of those games ended with, like, ten cards in our deck, like that very last game. We had, what, like, eight cards left? So, yeah, we played multiple bombs in the game. Played Intrude. We played Deadly Cover-Up. I probably played Hide in Plain Sight as well. I don't remember. Um, but a lot of those games were two or three bombs and, and a dream. And, and it works. If you've got the bombs and you've got the nice cheap removal, like the slice, the murder, the long goodbye to try to prolong the games, and you get into good matchups, you do have to get pretty lucky as well. And we got into nice, slower matchups. We didn't get steamrolled by aggro too often there at all. So really lucky run overall. And I think that's, that's mainly what it is. This was um, just really high power level of cards in the sealed pool for this kind of deck and we got lucky enough to not be punished by our mediocre mana base that much and uh so we just got to play a bunch of bombs and and went off of sheer power level rather than super skilled gameplay or anything but that is a big part of sealed especially now that there are more than six packs uh not more than six packs more than six rares per sealed pool so we take it that is a seven win run in the arena open day one event which means that tomorrow i'll be coming at you with the arena open day two draft number one that is going to be a best of three draft of murders at Karlov Manor, where if we can win three or four rounds out of four, we will qualify for the Arena Open at day two draft number two. If we qualify for that one, then that's where there's cash money on the line. So if we get a three rounds, if we get three rounds of, of victories, then it'll be a single elimination draft. We lose one round in draft two and we're out. If we get four round victories, then we have double elimination. We can lose two rounds in that uh, in that final draft before we're out. So my goal always, if we make it to day two, well, first of all, it's to make it to day two. But if we're in day two, then the goal is to hopefully make it to draft number two so that we get to draft two different decks, get some variety going there uh, at the very least, even if we don't get to cash out into any money. But no matter what happens now, we're, we're in the money pretty much. Uh, it took us two runs to make it to day two so that was about 50,000 gold because it cost 25,000 gold per run we got our 5,000 gems back and we're getting 500 back so I guess we're getting 5,500 gems back for like um uh for quite a bit spent for the equivalent of 5,000 gems spent so I guess we're not in the money unless we get two round wins 
then we're like breaking even. Three round wins are better, and we're super, super happy. Either way, super nice to get in off of only a couple sealed runs, and I should probably end the video so we can get some practice, get some rest, and get ready for the Arena Open Day 2, draft number 1. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for supporting the channel, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. Other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.